Matilda Wormwood is an extremely intelligent girl. At just 12, she has already read hundreds of novels and can make stories up in her mind. She also has the ability to solve complex algebraic equations without the help of a calculator. One would assume that she goes to the best school in town, but in fact, it is the exact opposite. Matilda's arrogant parents, Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood, are still bitter over the fact that they gave birth to a girl. Hence, they try their best to suppress Matilda as much as they can. They constantly make fun of her hobbies reprimand her for the smallest of reasons, and most importantly, don't let her go to school. Matilda has gained all of her intelligence with the help of books, which she receives from her neighbor and close friend, Mrs. Phelps. Despite her strange life, she has always had a smile on her face. But one day, something good finally happens to her. From a nearby school, two teachers visit the Wormwood residence to check if the children are being educated properly. The cunning parents quickly lie that their daughter has been homeschooled, but the female teacher, Miss Honey, knows that something is up. Later, she visits Matilda alone and inquires if she wants to go to school. The little girl is scared of her parents, but Miss Honey promises to teach her literature if she joins. This finally convinces Matilda, and she says yes before heading upstairs. Later, as she is in her room, reading a book as usual, her arrogant dad barges in. He chastises her for talking to the teacher and not playing along with his story. He then reveals that, as a punishment, she will be sent to Crunchum Hall, the most notorious school in town. The headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull, is a big, scary woman who is a former hammer-throwing champion. She has a very distinctive way of keeping children in order by punishing them savagely. Matilda is obviously scared that she is being sent to Crunchum Hall, so to get back at her father, she comes up with a plan. Later, when her parents are busy watching the television, she sneaks into their room and mixes their cosmetics together. Mr. Wormwood arrives shortly after and uses a serum to massage his head. When he checks in the mirror, though, he learns that his hair has turned completely green. This takes him by surprise, so he heads to confront Matilda, only to find her fast asleep. The little girl is just pretending to be asleep, but her dad doesn't know this, so he walks away in confusion. The next morning, Matilda gets up early and heads to her new school. However, when she arrives, she finds that the gates have not been opened yet. Her best friend, Mrs. Phelps, spots her and reveals that she is actually a full hour early. Now, with nothing to do, Matilda decides to narrate a story that she has recently made. Mrs. Phelps, being a lover of books as well, immediately agrees, and the story begins. Once upon a time, there was a famous escapologist that fell in love with a beautiful acrobat. Both of them were professionals of their respective trades, and a lot of people admired them. Soon, they got married and started performing as a duo. However, they were still sad, as there was one thing which they did not have a child. Years passed by, but a breakthrough never came. Hence, to divert their minds from it, they came up with a daring plan, which would surely make headlines throughout the world. One day, in front of a large circus audience, the couple announced that they will perform the world's most dangerous stunt. It is called the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage. Sounds crazy, but the title could use some work. At this point, Mrs. Phelps is captivated by the story, but when she says what happened next? Matilda says, I don't know. Since she has a habit of making up stories, she will need time to think about the rest. Just then, the gate finally opens, and Matilda, along with another new girl, gets inside. There is a large statue of Mrs. Trunchbull throwing a hammer ball at the entrance. As the two girls look around the place in awe, suddenly, the other students welcome them with a musical number. Oh, God, no. They mention that the school is like a prison, and that there is no escaping it. One can run, but they cannot hide from the vicious headmistress that is Mrs. Trunchbull. She will make sure that all the students are beaten up and straightened out before they graduate. After a while, Matilda finally reaches her class, and by coincidence, it is being taught by none other than Miss Honey. Unlike Mrs. Trunchbull, she is an empathetic and kind woman who loves to be with children. As the class board is filled with algebraic equations, which the seniors wrote at night, Miss Honey asks Matilda to polish it off. However, instead of cleaning it with a duster, the little girl starts solving the equations. Miss Honey is left in complete and utter disbelief when she sees that Matilda has solved every equation correctly. Correctly. Realizing that she is not a normal girl, Miss Honey inquires what else she does in her free time. Matilda replies that she reads novels, like The Lord of the Rings. Hearing this, the entire class is astounded, too. After the class is over, an impressed Miss Honey decides to approach the headmistress and tell her about Matilda's talent. Then, we finally get a first look at Mrs. Trunchbull. She is a giant woman who wears an army uniform, even at school. There are several trophies in her room that amplify 
Lorelai how good a hammer thrower she was. Miss Honey nervously tells her about the new girl, but as expected, Mrs. Trunchbull is not interested. She doesn't want to give any students special attention and certainly does not want to educate them. All she desires is punishing the students and making their lives miserable. Sounds like a musical number... No? Oh, okay. In the next scene, when Matilda reaches home, she excitedly reveals the details of her first day at school, but her parents could care less. Mr. Wormwood, who is a car salesman by profession, has just sold some luxury cars by illegally modifying their parts. He has made a good amount of cash, which makes Mrs. Wormwood happy. However, the honest Matilda is far from impressed. She berates her dad for cheating on others and hearing this, the latter snatches her book and tears it apart. Matilda is heartbroken, but she has just the perfect idea idea for revenge. The next morning, she again sneaks inside her parents' room and pours a good amount of glue inside her father's hat. She then hands it over to her unsuspecting father, who wears it casually and departs for work. Later, at school, while Matilda is discussing with her new mates, a frightened boy suddenly arrives asking for help. Apparently, someone poured syrup on Mrs. Trunchbull's chair, and now she is suspecting that the boy did it. Hearing this, all the students become scared, as the boy will most likely end up in Chokey, a brutal punishment box where the naughtiest of students are capped. However, Matilda remains calm, and she comes up with a plan. She urges the frightened boy to lay down, and asks all the students to throw their coats over him. Just as he becomes completely hidden, Mrs. Trunchbull arrives, looking for him. Matilda directly points at the pile of coats, and reveals that the boy became exhausted, and collapsed about 30 minutes ago. They covered him with coats, hoping it would protect him from the sun. Yeah, that, yeah. This angers Mrs. Trunchbull, and she was really hoping to punish the boy. Now, since she has to release her anger somehow, she turns towards an innocent girl with ponytails. Mrs. Trunchbull asserts that she doesn't like ponytails, and with this excuse, she grabs the girl by her hair and swings her around like a hammer ball. As everyone watches in horror, she launches the girl outside the school premises. Fortunately, she isn't hurt, and she returns back as if nothing happened. After school, Matilda meets Mrs. Phelps and continues with her unfinished story. After the escapologist and acrobat announced their deadly stunt. They hired a manager to help with the promotions. She was the stepsister of the acrobat, but was always cruel and menacing. She also was a former hammer-throwing champion. Meanwhile, the escapologist got on stage and revealed to thousands of people that the show won't go as planned, because his wife is actually pregnant. The crowd paused for a while, but then they erupted in applause. Everyone was happy that the two were finally going to be parents. However, the arrogant manager interrupted the couple's emotional moment and explained that since she had spent a lot of money on promotions, the show would have to go on. If not, she will call the police on them. With this, the escapologist and the acrobat reluctantly prepared themselves for the death-defying stunt. Mrs. Phelps is curious to know what happens next, but just like last time, Matilda does not know. She then departs, but not before promising to meet the next day. The following day at school, while everyone is having lunch in the canteen, Mrs. Trunchbull suddenly arrives. Apparently, someone stole her chocolate cake and ate it. She warns the thief to come and reveal themselves. Just then, a tiny but obese boy burps out loud, and when the stench reaches Mrs. Trunchbull, she licks it and realizes that he is in fact the culprit. Enraged, she decides to punish him. She orders her chefs to prepare a large chocolate cake, and all the boy has to do is eat it fully. Failing to do so will result in him being sent to the chokey. The cake is giant and all the odds are stacked up against the boy, but with the encouragement of his friends, he manages to eat it whole. Mrs. Trunchbull is taken aback by the turn of events, but she doesn't want to give up. Hence, she comes up with an excuse and drags the boy to the chokey, despite Matilda's best efforts to save him. After school, Matilda approaches Mrs. Phelps and starts narrating the remainder of her story. The escapologist and the acrobat readied their positions and the stunt began. It was a nervous one, but at the end, both of them escaped from their shackles in the nick of time. However, fate had something else written for them. Due to a mishap, the acrobat slipped and dropped to the floor, resulting in numerous fractures. She managed to survive, but only long enough to bear the child. The escapologist was devastated at the loss of his wife, but he promised to give his daughter the best life that he could. However, things only get worse from there. Since he was always busy with work, the escapologist invited the evil man manager to look after his daughter. When he left for work, the woman always tormented the little girl and made her work. But one day, the escapologist found out about this and promised to take revenge. He angrily left in his car, and that was the last time he was seen. He never came back home. That night, while Matilda is at home, she surprisingly moves a trash can without touching it. Apparently, her intelligent brain is capable of performing telekinesis.
this. The following day at school, while Miss Honey is teaching a lesson to all the students, Mrs. Trunchbull arrives in a weird uniform. She declares that today, phys ed, or physical education classes, are going to take place. Hearing this, all the students become scared, but Mrs. Trunchbull leads them to a field with a weird musical number, which only glorifies how she became a champion in the past. After a while, they arrive at the field, which turns out to be a brutal camp. There are barbed wires, high fences, and even mines. The students will have to cross the entire thing without any rest. Matilda is left speechless by the cruelty, so she comes up with a plan. She asks her friends to drop her pet Newt inside Mrs. Trunchbull's water glass. The latter obliges, and when the cruel headmistress sees the Newt in there, she becomes enraged. She tries punishing every student on sight, but a fed-up Matilda stands up to her and calls her a bully. She then picks up the same glass using her telekinesis powers and smacks Mrs. Trunchbull in the head with it. At the same time, the cheeky Newt sneaks around inside her knickers and starts moving around. This is enough to send the arrogant headmistress running to her office. And after all the students are gone, Matilda calls Miss Honey and displays her newfound powers. This surprises the teacher, but she promises to keep it a secret. Later, the two walk home together and talk about their hobbies and interests. As their bond grows stronger, Miss Honey invites Matilda to her home. It is a small cottage in the middle of a forest. Matilda inquires about her parents, and Miss Honey reveals that she doesn't have any. She was an infant when her mom passed away, and her dad disappeared years later. She was left in the care of her cruel step-aunt, who cunningly took her home away and left her to rot in this house. When Matilda hears this, flashes of the escapologist and the acrobat come to her mind. Then, it finally dawns on her that the story she was narrating is in fact a real one. Miss Honey is actually the daughter of the escapologist and the acrobat. Now she is even more hell-bent on exacting revenge against the cruel headmistress. Matilda wants to defeat her and retrieve Miss Honey's home, but when she reaches home, her parents deliver some bad news. The faulty cars that Mr. Wormwood sold were actually discovered, and now the mafia is after them. So, the entire family will be moving to Spain the next day. Matilda cries tears of sorrow as she hears this. She doesn't want to leave, but she has no other choice. The next day, however, she decides to attend school one last time. In a dark room, Mrs. Trenchbull has summoned all the students for a spelling competition. The rules are simple. If someone makes a spelling error, they will be punished inside the chokey box. She then brings out one of these boxes, and it is revealed that it has razor-sharp thorns in it. Soon, the competition begins. Initially, some students give correct answers, as Miss Honey has taught them well. But then, Mrs. Trunchbull brings up a long word that doesn't even exist. When a kid fails to answer, she starts dragging her to the chokey. But just then, the other students start revolting. They purposely give wrong answers, believing that Mrs. Trunchbull cannot punish all of them at once. But, to their horror, the cunning headmistress has several chokies set up in place. Just when it appears that all students are going to get punished, Matilda decides to take matters into her own hands. At first, using her powers, she writes on the board and warns Mrs. Trunchbull to go away. When the latter doesn't listen, Matilda joins some nearby chains and makes a large humanoid figure out of them. The towering figure destroys all the chokies one by one, leaving Mrs. Trunchbull stunned. Then, Matilda uses her next move. She binds Mrs. Trunchbull's hair into two ponytails and starts swinging her with the help of them. The next second, the arrogant headmistress is launched out through the ceiling. That's how you solve your problems. Straight up murder. When she reaches the surface, she drops her house keys and quickly makes a run for it. Miss Honey picks up the keys and becomes delighted that she can finally live at her family home now. Later, all the students gather around and thank Matilda for driving out the crazy woman. However, their happy moment is short-lived. When Matilda's parents arrive in a car and tell her to get in, they only have one hour to reach the airport and fly away. The little girl reluctantly agrees and approaches them, but right then, Miss Honey shows up and asks Mr. Wormwood if she can keep Matilda. At first, he is taken aback, but when he realizes that he'll have one last person to look after, he agrees. Matilda also says yes, and she bids her parents a proper goodbye. She even takes off the glued hat from her dad's head. The movie ends as Matilda and Miss Honey reach their home, a home that the escapologist and the acrobat once lived in.